Rock your soul. Be bold enough to rock your soul. Beginning with the awareness that you're already whole. Turn within where it all begins and begin to see reality that will set you free and help you grow to your greatest yet to be. Rock your soul. And welcome to Agape. Life is good. What you guys laughing at? <laughs> we love it. We love it. <laughs> we welcome you here today. And we're, we're in the midst, obviously, of a celebration. But even beyond the, the personal celebration, we're in the midst of tuning into the cosmic celebration that's happening everywhere. The entire cosmos is lit up with the presence and the power and the love of God and all of nature and all of the multi-dimensional universe and the quasars at the very center and the, the magnificent trees and flowers and foliage and ground upon which we stand being holy. Everything is in celebration of the presence of God. Everything is in gratitude for being able to participate in the realm of the divine. And what about us? As spiritual beings having a human, a human incarnation, we have come to celebrate. We have come to set our light free. We have come to set our gifts, talents, and capacities free. And though from time to time we are sidelined and even imprinted by the status quo, sidelined and even imprinted uh, by the false narratives of what to be afraid of until everyone has gone blind with fear and doubt and worry and anxiety and anxiousness, forgetting that they are a cosmic being in tune with the infinite consciously coming more and more in tune with the infinite that we may declare dynamic peace and love and wholeness and harmony on earth right where we stand. We want to be bold enough to proclaim the absolute truth that we can't get any more than what God has already given us. You can't get anything more than what God has already given because the presence of the living God has already given you everything. Everything that the presence of God is has already been given. So our role is to let it unfurl, to let it unfold. Our role is to discover and activate and express it. Our role is to wake up to it. And this is what is meant this month when we dive into the theme of you from the top. We're saying in substance that a moment of beholding reality is a moment in which our perception is no longer hindered or blocked by an overlay of fear and doubt and worry. No longer blocked uh, by the overlay of what the status quo-ism and what society is often feeding us on a daily basis. There's a moment in prayer and in meditation and in life visioning and in certain spiritual practices where you have a moment where you come into what is hu called human interruptus. And that is your human consciousness that becomes interrupted and you opt out of it for a moment and you begin to see that all around you there's a presence of light and love and beauty and wholeness and harmony. You begin to see that all around you, you're in a field of infinite potential, infinite possibilities. You begin to see and feel that the universe is progressive and is for you and there's nothing against you. You begin to see that every step along the way, whether you would call it good, call it good whether you call it bad, was for a great blessing or a great lesson in your life. You begin to see that everything is calling your name to be great, to, to calling your name into expression. We're talking about the room at the top and the, 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 the room, the view from the top. This is what you're seeking to see. The, 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 the great theologian, mystic Dr. Howard Washington Thurman would talk to us about remember our remembered radiance. That there are moments in our life where we had that, that moment where... Phew, seemed to be dark around us, and suddenly we could see that there was light all about us. Moments in which our, our back was against the wall, and then incrementally or suddenly, woo, a way was found. A moment in which we were, we were full to overflowing with foreboding about a future uh, that we thought may, we have imp we, that we had imprinted with the worst case scenario, and then suddenly that thing didn't come to pass, or it did come to pass, and we found out it wasn't no big deal, we're still here, we're still alive. Moments of remembered radiance is what we want to begin to embrace on a regular basis because oftentimes human beings have a tendency to dredge up the most negative things that have happened in their life and put it on a replay, on a loop. 
So that every time anxiety comes up, every time anxiousness happens, every time there's a, no evidence that something good is about to happen, there becomes an unconscious replaying of negative circumstances in our life, and it becomes a loop of anxiety, a loop of depression, a loop of anxiousness, a loop of pouring toxic chemicals in our body temple, thus no longer being prepared for the miracle, no longer being prepared uh, uh, for the cosmic energy flowing through us, no vibrational match for the grace of God that's trying to happen through us. And so we want to take it upon ourselves uh, to embrace our remembered radiance. And so have it uh, on tap for us that even when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we keep walking. We don't just stop and build a tent there. We keep walking. And so in these moments of remembered uh, radiance, we begin to develop a whole new loop, a whole new loop. And we begin to have certain things on tap. Just as you, you, may, you may be remembering certain things that have happened in your life that you don't like. Why not try remembering the things where you got over? They're called testimonies. After a test of the soul. After a coal has become a diamond. You see, after a caterpillar has become a, a butterfly, we want to remember those particular moments and we want to call them forth on a regular basis until we develop an inner feeling tonality. Is not only that everything is all right, but everything's going to be all right. It's a feeling tone, you see. I have, I have a number of them on tap. I'm thinking I was sharing in the earlier service about some that have been with me for years that I tap into. I can remember with a... Uh, Dr. Daniel L. Morgan, the founder of the, 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 the Guidance Church of Religious Science, I can remember having this dream with him. He was in the dream, and, 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 and for a couple of nights in a row, we would be climbing up this mountain, this very steep mountain, and we were helping each other up, and we got to the top of the mountain, and we looked out, and there was this beautiful planet there. It was glowing, it was shining, it was radiating, and he said, Michael, that, that's, that's what I'm doing right there. And I looked at the planet, it was very, very beautiful, very, very luminous. And I said to him, this is what I'm doing right here. And I had a big, beautiful planet, and then it burst into many parts, but it didn't diminish the planet. And I realized those were satellites emanating from the planet. So today I, 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 I can see the unfolding of that particular dream. I can see Agape East. I can see Agape Bay Area. I see Agape Durango. I, I, I see uh, Enlightened Heart. I, I see Soul. I, I see, um, the, what's it called? The Soul? Soul Center. I see these, these, these planets emanating uh, from the planet of Agape. That was the dream that I had years ago, and I have that on tap. It's an energy of not being able to see what's going to happen, but knowing it's all right, knowing it's going to be all right, you see. I can remember another one where I was sitting in the back of a sanctuary, and up in the front on the stage was Dr. Daniel L. Morgan and Dr. Homer Johnson, the great mystic of our movement. And they were in front of an oversized Bible, and then there were other texts, spiritual texts, oversized, really big as well. I'm sure it was the, the Bhagavad Gita and the Dhammapada. And, and then they were standing there. And Homer saw me in the back. And he said, he waved me. Come on up. Come up here. Come up here. And so I came up to the stage. And, I, and he put me between Dr. Dan and Homer. And they began to whisper in my ear simultaneously. And then Homer said, read this. And he picked out a scripture and had me read it. And as I began to read it, all of this movement started to take place in the congregation. People were, were yelling and they were applauding and healings were happening. And I got nervous and I stopped. He said, no, no, continue, continue. And I continued. And I realized at that particular moment that that was a calling upon my heart and soul. It was a calling and an anointing of the work that I, I would be doing. I have that on tap. I have a number of them on tap, like breadcrumbs along the way, letting me know, even though I couldn't see what was about to happen, I knew everything was all right and everything was going to be all right, and it's on a loop, you see. And then there was a moment in which this dream I was walking down the street, and in the dream I was, I was very small, very tiny. Everything was really big. 
And there was this building, and people were coming out of this building, and they were overjoyed. They were in love. There was a celebration happening, and there was music, and there was all stripes of people, white and black and Asian and Latina and straight and gay and all of this, and everybody was just so vibrant. And they said to me inside, this is what we want you to do. And I said, what? How am I going to do that? Now, in the dream, I'm really small. And they, said, and they said, you say yes, and we'll do the rest. And that was a, 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 it brought to me to an utter yielding of the presence of not knowing, I didn't have to know how to do something. I just had to be willing to say yes to it. And then the how-tos and the support and the guidance and all that was necessary for the unfoldment of a celebratory community that was celebrating the divine presence would show up in ways that I couldn't even imagine at that particular time. And so all that is being said this morning is join the celebration. The invitation is forever. That there is a forever invitation for each and every one of us as the spiritual image and likeness of God itself, an unrepeatable nomina held in the mind, heart of the infinite, of each of us being a unique expression of infinite potential to join the celebration from on high and allow that frequency and that vibration to so take over our life that even when we don't have words for it, even if we don't have pictures in our mind about it, being the vibrational beings that we are, incrementally or suddenly there is a vibrational match with that frequency and inspired wisdom and divine guidance and the movement of the spirit takes us over and, and suddenly we are in our focus. I can remember, I was sharing this, you know, there's a, a, an interview that I did with a Sterling Brown for, for the summit, and then he turned the tables on me and started interviewing me in, in, the, in the interview. And I was sharing, we were both sharing yeses in our life. And I was sharing that when I used to work for the mayor, Tom Bradley, I was appointed to the, I was appointed to the 8th district to manage the senior citizen affairs in that particular district. But every day that I would leave City Hall or the field office, I wouldn't go home, I'd go to the beach. And I'd go to this place called my power spot, and I would take off my suit jacket, I'd take off my shirt and my tie, and I'd lay them down, and I'd begin to do breath work, deep breathing, rapid breath, long breathing, and I would look out at the ocean, and I would see it's the oceanic, I feel my own oceanic nature, I'd look at the sand and see the infinite nature of God, and I would reach these ecstatic states of consciousness, and I would begin to affirm the truth of my life and, and my destiny. And I became aware, I, I remember saying to myself uh, uh, that when I'm in my right space, this is how it's going to feel. And so as I began to teach and began to, to speak and began to put agape together and began to be a practitioner, that same feeling that I had at the beach looking at the oce ocean and the oceanic nature of my own being, that's how it feels. It feels ecstatic. Static, beautiful, orgasmic, woo-wee. You see, I got that on tap. These are loops, you see. And when we lowly listen, when we come into our practice of meditation, affirmative prayer, life visioning, hanging out with high-minded people, it's called fellowship, fellowship of the Most High, studying, something happens and we begin to listen to our individuality rather than our personality. Two different streams of information. The personality is catching that which is in sync with that personality structure and the paradigm that that personality is in. Every aspect of your personality has arisen from time and experience, but your individuality and your indivisibility comes directly from God. And through your prayer, you begin to listen to your individuality rather than personality, and you move from reaction to revolution. And instead of reacting to circumstances and situations, you become a part of the revolution of expanding consciousness because transformation becomes the order of your day. You're not merely a reactionary to what's happening in the planet. 
You are a revolutionary because of your non-reactivity uh, to circumstance. And then that revolution becomes an evolution of your soul. And that evolution of your soul gives vent to the unfoldment of your spirit. And you become more yourself. Understand what I just said there. The spirit does not evolve. The spirit unfolds. It's your own soul that evolves. You as a living soul, you, you evolve to become greater dimensions and greater possibilities of yourself. But the soul is already, the, the spirit's already perfect. It's already infinite. So it unfolds and reveals more and more and more of, it, and more of itself, you see. And, and, and so as this particular takes, as this, boom, da, da. So a lot of energy is here. A lot of energy is here. And as I, as I said in the past, what happens when all that energy is trying to come through me, my, my eye tooth, my tongue gets in front of my eye tooth, and I can't see a word I'm saying, so it just comes out <laughs> kind of weird, you know. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, we move from reaction to revolution. And believe you me, you're here for a revolution. That's why you're here. You're here to be a revolutionary, to embrace the evolutionary impulse that governs the universe and to allow the unfoldment of the spirit to take over your life and to so live in the feeling tone of it's all right and it's going to be all right, it's all right, it's going to be all right. So what happens? There becomes a vibrational match for the next stage of your unfolding. There becomes a vibrational match for the celebration that's happening cosmically. It begins to flow through you and sometimes there's no reason for it at all. You're just in your gratitude, in the feeling tone of connection, in the feeling tone of thankfulness. Thankfulness, vibrational match happens, and then you'll understand the scripture that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has entered into the hearts of those that love God, that be us beyond what you can see, beyond what you can hear. The imaginal realm just becomes a starting point for that which is real. Understand. That your personality does not know about transformation. It thinks transformation is suicide. Because it is for the personality. Meaning that you'll no longer be totally identified with your personality. You'll start to be identified with the wholeness of your being that is infinite, you see. And then you begin to discover, as the saying goes, that the closer you get to the mountaintop, the steeper it gets. The closer you get to the top, the steeper it gets. Meaning, as you become really interested in awakening, really interested in enlightenment, really interested in becoming the next stage of your own unfolding, there is a clearing and a cleansing that takes place. And there is a, sometimes a hesitancy on the personality structure because we don't know what's next, you see. As I was saying in the earlier service, if you go out and canvas people and say, are you afraid of enlightenment? Are you afraid of enlightenment? Everyone would say no. You know why? Because they're not interested in it. You only become afraid of enlightenment when you're interested. When you become interested and you do spiritual practice, then something begins to brood in you. Something begins to churn. Something begins to come up to be healed. Something that's been laying dormant begins to come up to be transmuted into a higher frequency. So when you get close, you get close to the mountaintop, it becomes steeper. And this is when you use your remembered radiance of how you got over your testimony. So you can keep holding the higher frequency while clearing is taking place, while pruning is happening, while, while that which no longer serves you is being taken away. So you're, you're holding the higher frequency, not reacting to the circumstances, uh, but holding on to the fact that you are a revolutionary, becoming the next great vision and version of yourself. This is real work, I tell you. This is real in the work. And so if you're, you're not afraid, the personality's not afraid, you need to get a little bit more interested. Enlightenment is not hard if you're interested in it. And most people are interested in the byproducts of spiritual practice. Jesus called it, you, you, you come to me because of the, the, the loaves and the fishes, but you're not coming for the teaching. But when you come for the teaching and then you come for the practice, you become a fiat of the spirit. And you anchor the realm of ever expanding good on earth. And because you, because you don't want anything that God hasn't given you because God has given you everything, you're not living with this inner anxiety of trying to get something out there. 
You're living with a divine implosion of the releasing of everything that's in here. And so you frame what comes out of your mouth. You frame your conversation around speaking only that which you would wish to experience. You operate under the law. I'm not talking about man's law that's imperfect and has uh, people of color more incarcerated than anybody else on the planet and there's all manner of imperfections in the human law. I'm talking about universal law. When you come into universal law, you will only speak that which you wish to experience. And sometimes it's hard because sometimes you want to talk about some folks. But if you don't want to experience that, you better shut up. You better pray until you see the Christ. You better pray until you see possibility. So that you stay in alignment with the fundamental harmony of the universe, you see. And so all of this is leading to our theme, view from the top. Everyone out in agape land. And there's a few people here today, and some family members have shown up because of the celebration of uh, this guy named Michael Beckwith. But all of you guys out there in agape land, you've all had moments of testimony. Moments where you didn't know how you were going to get out of something, and then something happened and you got out of it. You have moments like that. It may have come through prayer, it may have come through an accidental alignment. It may have come that you, you begged and beseeched and finally you exhausted yourself and in your moment of exhaustion you got out of the way. However it happened, you've got a testimony. You want to put your testimonies on a loop. You want to begin to write them down so that they serve you. So as Dr. Thurman says, you learn to walk by remembered radiance, not merely by sight, eyes have not seen, not merely by your hearing, ears have not heard, that which the mother, father, God presence has in store for those who love God. You're learning to live in the feeling tone of the infinite that's invisible to your senses. But more real than anything. More real than anything. And then you'll make a great discovery. You probably have already made this discovery. There's some good news emanating from your soul right now. There's, there's, a, there's some good news. There's a destiny there within you. But there's some good news about the possibilities. There's good news about potential. There's good news about your connection with the presence. It's great. And oftentimes, people are going to ex exogenous things outside of themselves to get the news. If you're listening to the news from anything other than your own soul, you're in trouble. Don't do it. You can get a little information out there, but I'm telling you, your soul knows. Your soul knows everything, you see. You can tap into your spirit, and you can catch the real news. It's the gospel. It's the good news. God wins. Love wins. Peace wins. Joy wins. Beauty wins all the time. But you see people just capitulating. Going to external sources to see if they can get some news. See if they can get some surcease from pain. Surcease from fear and worry. No, don't, don't do that to yourself. Come in and you will get everything that you need from within you. You'll get the green light on whatever you need to. You'll get the red light on that which that road you don't need to walk down. You'll get it. And then you'll walk in remembered radiance until you're glowing, spiritually radioactive. Glowing from the power and the presence and the love of God. And you will get to know what you need to know direct from spirit. Not from man whose breath is in his nostrils. You'll learn to trust yourself. You'll learn to trust the presence. But you have to have a relationship with it, not a memorization of it. You have to have a relationship, an encounter. And I'm saying that when you have this encounter, 
You will not be able to unsee what you have seen, and that view from the top will be indelibly imprinted on your heart and soul, and you'll walk with remembered radiance even during the darkest times of your life. That's a promise from the Spirit of the living God. Behold, I will be with you unto the end of the world. That means unto the end of a present paradigm, an epic, and to the end of the present point of view, and to the end of a present perspective, a perception. I'm going to be with you unto the end when everything is falling apart. Now, all this falling apart. And the new is not quite seen by all. I'll be with you until the end of the world. Don't fret. Don't fear. I'm with you. This is what the Holy Spirit, the Christ, the awakened consciousness is saying, you see. And ultimately, as you, as you, as you work this and prepare yourself to be vibrationally prepared, you see, You'll begin to see, not with eyes. You begin to hear, not with ears. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. That which the Father, Mother God has in store for those who love God. You'll begin to see differently. And you'll be in the world, full on. But you'll be of a higher frequency. So all the work we're doing, what are we doing? We are preparing ourselves. It's an inner preparation for more energy. We're preparing ourselves for the initiations to come. When you go from one expansion to another, you, you're initiated, you see? And in those moments of initiation, it doesn't always feel good. It doesn't feel good all the time. There's emotions that come up and there's stagnant thoughts. And, and as I said earlier, the, the constant repetition of worst case scenarios implanted onto the future, you see? And, 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 and when we prepare ourselves, that gets cleared out. The closer you get to the mountaintop, the steeper the mountain is. And then we become vibrationally prepared. We're able to hold more cosmic energy. And you'll be able to tell that you're holding more cosmic energy because you'll notice that things that used to bother you, they didn't change necessarily. They just don't bother you as much. Why is that? They're still, they're still there. Because you become a bigger container for the cosmic energy. And then you'll understand this. You'll understand another level of what Jesus the Christ meant when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Heretofore, we've always looked at that as we're forgiving those people that crucified him. We're forgiving, you're forgiving people in your life that have done you wrong, that have gossiped about you, that have talked about you, that stole from you, whatever the case may be. But you'll come to a greater awareness that when you say, forgive them for they know not what they do, you're talking about your previous incarnations in this one incarnation, your previous iterations of who you were. You look back upon yourself and you see younger versions of yourself and sometimes you might be a little embarrassed at what that person thought or what that person did. You say, well, I'm so glad I'm not that person anymore. But you want to forgive and set it free, energy free. Forgive the past iterations of who we used to be. They didn't know what they were doing. They were ignorant. It's all right. They were just doing stepping stones to a greater expression of ultimate reality. And then you'll have a great degree of freedom and you'll, your freedom will be so magnificent that as you forgive them for they know not what they do, you'll discover that if people talk about you, you know that they're speaking from their own deep insecurities. Anybody that talks about you and gossips about you are deeply insecure. And you'll see it, but you won't even bother. Woo, there, woo, wow, woo. You'll just notice it because you've forgiven all of your previous selves. Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? Yes. Forgive. Those other versions didn't know what you know. And then you're going to have to forgive this version. A few years from now, woo, I thought I knew something. I, I was just barely scratching the surface. <laughs> but once that becomes a part of the process, you become untouchable. The world can't touch you. People can't touch you. Places, circumstances, situations can't touch you because you're not in that world. You're not there. You remember what, what Albert Einstein said? 
You know, first of all, you know, he had that shamanic dream, and, and in that dream lucid state, he got gifted the theory of relativity, and it wasn't from a figuring out mind going to this, you know, laboratory trying to figure something out, you know. But he was hated. Now, all people who make breakthroughs oftentimes are, are hated or disregarded for a while. And they asked him about that, you know. You know, how do you handle this hate? You know, and he said, well, arrows of hate are shot my direction many times, but it doesn't bother me because they come from a world in which I do not inhabit. You won't be in that world. You have forgiven yourself. You have prepared to live at a higher frequency. The view from the top is clear. You are beholding the presence. Nothing can touch you save God. Anyone that tries, deeply insecure, you bless and you forgive. Wipe the dust from your feet and keep on stepping. God is good, I'm telling you. Yes. Woo! 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 I'm trying to tell you something here. <laughs> As I said in the earlier service, I need you all to get some, a string and put it around your neck. Because <laughs> I'm casting pearls. <laughs> And I don't want these pearls to go to swine or unreceptive consciousness. That's what it means. The pearls are dropping here. The Spirit of God is saying, come on now. Prepare yourself for a blessing. Woo! Too big for you to receive. So you have to expand your awareness. Ah! Ah! Mmm! 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 Yes! Mmm! Mmm! Oh, I'm open and available. Say that. I'm open and available right there in Agape land. Just right there. Even if you've got some people around you in the living room, just say, I'm open and available to more good. Say, say right where you are. Say, now and forever. I demonstrate abundance, perfect health and well-being. Now and forever. I manifest more good than I can imagine. Let that kind of stuff roll out of you on a regular basis. You see, become a vibrational match to the dynamic energy that's tapping you on the shoulder right now, saying, let me through. Let me express. I got some good for you. You don't even know it exists. You don't even know. You, you think you know what you want. You, you, you have no idea because eyes haven't seen it. No ears haven't heard it. It's not in that realm of your present perception. So it's in the unknown. Come, join the celebration. The invitation is forever. You can jump in whenever you want. There's no shelf life on your destiny. I don't care whether you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, whatever. There's no shelf life. It's, the invitation is forever. Yeah. Come on in. <laughs> Practice. Stand tall in your majesty. Feel the impress of the spirit. Let the God times roll through you. If people think you're odd, that's all right. You'd rather be an oddball for God rather than a normal person in a limited paradigm. I'm going to stop. But do you realize that the majority have never been right on anything? Pretty much. It's always been like small groups of people that have breakthroughs. And the majority is always, ooh, no, that's not any good. That's too new. Why are you doing that? Ooh. So don't walk lockstep because everybody's doing whatever they're doing. Don't do it. Remember, the news report is from your soul. Not from an external source. Because you'll be led down the primrose path to bondage and slavery of your mind. And you are here to be a free being. Woo-wee! Woo! Free beings. Oh, to be free, baby. Free beings. Oh, there's so much here. I'm so glad I get to keep doing this. I was shocked when I heard Sadhguru say, it just hit me in a different way when he said, you know, the work that you've been doing at the Agape Movement for decades. It's like, decades? What? 
<laughs> I mean, I, I mean I've, I've heard it from different ways, you know, going on 35th year, but when he said decades, it just hit me like, decades? He's right. <laughs> decades, whoa. But to me, it's just been a nanosecond. Just been like, like that. I'm just beginning. As a movement, we're just beginning. As a spiritual community, we're just beginning. And people are now signing on to sanity. They're signing on to awakened consciousness. They're signing on to their own brilliance because they know from here, we're the teaching that gives them back to themselves. We don't want you. We want you to be you. <laughs> we don't want you to be us. We want you to be you fully and completely. You cannot have an enlightened society without enlightened people. You can't. We want you to wake up and be you. I'm stopping. I got to stop. I do. But I don't want to. Like I said, fortunately, I get to do this on a regular basis. Ah, so let's take a breath here. As Homer Johnson used to say, let's go upstairs. As I'm saying to you this month, let's have the view from the top. As Dr. Thurman has said, let's, let's walk in the ceiling tone of remembered radiance. Let's put that on a loop. Let's write about it. Let's talk about it. Let's pray from it. Let's affirm from it until there's just, a, just this loop a feeling tone of the miraculous that has happened in our life. You've all had miracles. We don't want them to be drowned out by commonplace experiences in life. We all have commonplace experiences. So much is going on. There are mistakes being made and, and, and so much happening in the world. But, but we're going into a loop of sanity. A loop of affirmation. A loop of prayer. A loop of remembered radiance, a loop of inwardly being prepared Woo. for more energy. I started to do this. <laughs> for more energy than we could possibly imagine. So we go into the upper room together. And we unleash a tremendous amount of gratitude. You have the power to do this. So you don't have to necessarily attach it to anything right now. You can be grateful for this or that or the other. That's great. It's a great way to get into it. But you can just be grateful. You can just be thankful. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative. I climbed that mountain and I, and I saw the planet burst into satellites without diminishing the planet. I'm so grateful I, I heard the anointing and the whispering in my ear from two of my teachers that said, go forth and multiply. I saw agape streaming out of this building and I said yes and they said, don't worry, we'll do the rest. And there's many more where that came from. What about you? What you got? View from the top. Recognizing this dynamic presence that's everywhere and feeling the impulse of the Spirit moving through us, galvanizing our attention, walking, uh, walking through us, talking through us, loving through us, hugging through us, sharing through us, giving through us, creating through us. Oh my God! Woo! It is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom! The kingdom! Give it! it God, it's, 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 woo! Brings us so, it brings God so much joy. We receive. And the word that is spoken from this place is a law. It's not a hope. It's a law unto itself that only knows its own old unfolding. I speak the word for each and every one of us that we may be free today, that every organ and action function of our body temple may be every whit whole to carry more cosmic energy for the work that we're called to do, that our mental body is clear, our emotional body is pure, the body of our affairs reflect and reveal the fundamental order of the universe. That would be beauty. That would be harmony. That would be order. That would be elegance. Oh, those words. Love those words. They're, they're describing you and your possibilities. Elegance. Elegance. Oh, don't be afraid of it. 
power, poise, confidence. Don't be afraid of it. Beauty, don't be afraid of it. Let it reign supreme in your life. The word that I am speaking is a word that says that all, not some, all needs are met because we don't want anything outside of what God has given us because God has given us everything, its entire being. We have it all. Now we want to reveal it according to our unique pattern. Woo! Oh, we're safe. Do you, do you realize, okay, I got I to gotta stop, but I'm just hearing, you know. <laughs> you're only safe when you're growing. Your safety net is in unfolding and evolution. Your safety net is when you are going into the edge and becoming more yourself. You're not safe when you hold back. You're safe when you step forward. We're safe. We're becoming the next great vision and version of ourselves individually and as a community. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, for such a time as this, woo, it is happening. When? It's happening. Woo, it's happening. It's happening. Woo, it's happening now. Now. It's happening right now. Oh, there's no future here. It's happening now. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, help them feel it. Help them feel it. Woo. love trust God that love is everywhere and we all, all are here to be the perfect givers of love and receivers of love love will have the final word so trust love and lean on love trust God that love is everywhere yeah and we all are here to be Receivers of love And love will have the final word Love has the first and the final word It's the word of God It's the, it's the let there be The let there be word Let there be light Let there be love Let there be life Let there be beauty It's the let there be Let there be love I that's a moment. That song is a moment. I was in South Africa. Ricky leaned over and had me a piece of paper and just said, what is love? And I wrote all those lyrics. She put it to music. That was a moment. I just, 